want to talk? So let's talk. Yeah. Talk. If you want to talk, you got to talk. You need to talk. News talk. I talk, you talk to Solomon. I talk, you talk to Solomon. Yeah, let's talk to Solomon. Talk, talk, talk to Solomon. Welcome back. It's Talk to Solomon time. That's me, Stan Solomon, my co-host. Chief Steve. And my other co-host from uh, south of the border, Brent Johnson of FreedomRadio.us. Brent, how are you? Doing just fine, Stan. It's just so far a great show today. Thank and you so just, much. Everybody stay tuned. There's a lot more coming. You're right there because we have a lady who we've not had before. Her name is uh, Tricia Ramos. Tricia is with an organization that works in Africa. She's going to talk to us about what's happening there to Christians. And by the way, it's not limited to just Uganda. That's the country where she's talking about. It's happening all over Africa and, frankly, all over the world. Tricia, welcome to Talk to Solomon. Hi. Thank you, Stan, for having me on. I appreciate it. Well, it's our pleasure and our honor. Uh, we're just pretty much going to hand the mic to you and talk to us about what's happening, what you're doing, why you're doing it, and how, what we can do about it. Yes, absolutely. Actually, I'm, I'm not working in, um, in Africa, but I, I actually live in, in America, in Texas, and I work for a ministry called Wretched Radio and TV. And what we do is we have this thing called The Biggest Project, where we pass out um, thousands, by the thousands. To the, to the date, we've actually passed out 144,000 DVDs that have the gospel message on them. It's called The Biggest Question. And um, I actually have one right here. You can, you can see, it, see it right here. And um, what this is, is it is it has a gospel message on here that is the most thorough gospel message I, I really have ever heard or seen on DVD. So it's basically a, a gospel track on steroids, steroids. And I don't know about, about you guys, but I, I love passing out gospel tracks that have um, the gospel message on them. But this is on steroids. It's, on, it's a DVD uh, with Todd Friel. Kirk Cameron, you remember actor Kirk Cameron from Fireproof, Growing Pains, and another pastor, R.W. Glenn, and we've passed out 144,000 of these around the world, okay, not only America, but around the world, and um, one of our team leaders, we, we have teams that are... Um, that, that, that are placed strategically in America and around the world in places like Africa. And one of our team leaders, his name's Bill Issa, he pastors a church in Uganda, a little small church that's very, very solid church, just a Bible church that goes verse by verse, book by book through the Bible. And he headed up one of our teams, and um, we weren't expecting what ended up happening to him. Um, we weren't expecting this. He was actually persecuted in a way that I never personally have been. Um, he was chained to a, a, a tree um, for about 12 hours after being confiscated with these DVDs, and he wasn't doing anything wrong. He actually, on a, on a Friday, this was about two weeks ago, um, had distributed about 300 of the DVDs at St. Lawrence University, and it was very successful. Students couldn't believe that they were giving things away for free. And, and, and let, me, let me back up and say this, um, Stan. The reason why he was able to even get these DVDs is because we have supporters that fund every single one of these. And then what I do is just strategically ship them to different locations, and then they get them, and they, they give them out for free. But the students couldn't believe that they were handing things out for free. That distribution went wonderful. It's the next day that posed problems. This team, including Pastor Bill, who was leading it, went to Miracle uh, Central Cathedral. I don't know if you've heard of that church. It is one of the largest churches. Actually, it seats the largest um, amount of people, 10,500 people. Um, it seats. It's a Pentecostal Word of Faith church. It's one of the largest in the, the East Central Africa area. In fact, one of the last people that they had speaking there was uh, faith teacher Benny Hen. And Pastor Bill went there with DVDs in hand and his small little team of five people and um, it, it, that's when it all it all broke out. They um, they were passing out DVDs. Everything went really good until the police, um, I guess, just got word that they were passing out gospel messages and that it didn't come from the pastor. They they asked, did this come from you know Pastor Robert, the pastor that that pastors that Pentecostal church and. It's a no, but, you know, we uh, basically are on the same team, and we just want to get the gospel out. And um, uh, they ended up arresting him. They grabbed him, um, ended up taking him into the church. 
the police officer slapped him in the face and pushed him to the ground and the DVDs went everywhere. And when I read this, that just made my heart sink because, you know, we don't understand persecution here in America. You know, the Bible says in, um, you know, 2 Timothy 3.12 that all those who desire to live godly will suffer persecution. And uh, we do experience a little bit of suffering here in America. I've had my gospel tracks ripped up. Maybe you've, Stan, maybe you've seen these million dollar bills. These are little million dollar bills and they have a gospel message on the back. I, I mean, the worst persecution that I've had of, is I've had these ripped up and thrown in my face. That's about it. But um, Pastor Bill uh, was slapped. He fell to the ground and DVDs went everywhere. Uh, they ended up taking him outside to a wetland. Uh, it was raining. They chained him to a tree, and the, the head police officer, the head chief, appointed a guard to watch him. And, and what, they, what, 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 what happened was, during about a two-hour period, Bill ended up witnessing and preaching the gospel to the security guard as he was, I mean, this, it couldn't get any better. I mean, this, is, this is, was an incredible story. He witnesses to this, this officer while he's chained to a tree for two, two hours, and mosquitoes are biting him. Okay, and you know malaria, the threat of malaria. Um, he does have malaria, and you know how it can rise its ugly head. Well, he ended up getting a, a malaria flare within those 12 hours that he was chained to a tree. And um, in the midst of that, the officer that he was talking to says, I've been thinking about becoming a born-againer. Um, <laughs> just really incredible. Now, let me ask a question here, which seems obvious. Was, were the police called by the pastor of this big church? because someone was on his turf? Great question. Yeah, what happened was they were outside, actually. Um, and, and you can go to our, our Facebook page, facebook.com slash biggest project, and you can see pictures of the actual location where they were at. But what happened was they were standing outside, passing out the DVDs. Then from there, they um, went a little bit closer into the premises, and that's when they got in trouble. But then they went, they asked them, can you go outside, you know, go, go outside and, and pass them out out there. So they obeyed them, obeyed, obeyed what they said, and went outside. But um, I I guess what was happening was some of the youth. Oh, you, I didn't even tell you this. What was going on that night? There were thousands of youth stand, and um, they were doing this dance competition called um, Dance Heaven, and they were competing for 20,000 shillings to see who could do the best slain in the spirit and who could do uh, the best dance to the Lord. And they were, some of the students half naked. Well, when some of the, the students came out, they wanted to get the DVDs. That's when it alerted the police. And one of the youth said, hey, there's their leader. And when the police saw who the leader was, he just grabbed him. And Pastor Bill says, he grabbed me like a thief and took me in. And that's when they did the whole slap ordeal and he fell to the ground and then they chained him to the tree uh, for about 12 hours. They ended up watching this is the kicker. Okay, so while Bill's preaching the gospel, they end up uh, watching the DVD to see if it was, they thought maybe it was pornographic in nature. They didn't know if it was something to do with terrorism and that Pastor Bill was just saying it had the gospel. But they uh, ended up coming back, the police officers, and saying, we find nothing wrong with this DVD and ended up letting him go at about 1 a.m. after the competition was over. And then, of course, Pastor Bill doesn't have a car. So he walked home for about five hours and just, he said he fell to his knees and was just thanking the Lord for his deliverance because he had been in prison before for preaching the gospel and they beat him severely all right let me go around the horn uh, chief that's a very interesting story uh, d do you know what they initially charged him with or detained him for what was the actual crime he was supposed to have committed yeah, I, that, that's exactly it. He has no idea. It was just um, for giving out these DVDs, and he wasn't even on their property. He had gone in, but then he had obeyed what they said and went outside, and they just unjustly, unjustly, you know, took him in there and did that to him and chained him up and made him suffer for, for, for no good reason. How old is the pastor? I'd say he's about 40. And, you know, I've, I've got it. He attributes it to this, you guys. He, he says that, well, we put a Facebook post out on our wretched radio uh, Facebook. And it went, I mean, it got like thousands of likes within a matter of a few hours. People started praying like crazy for Pastor Bill. The word got out, and he just really likens it to a miracle that they even let him go. Even though the charge, obviously, they, they didn't have anything to charge him with. That doesn't make a lot of difference in many countries of the world. Uh, Brent? I'm curious as to what the official reason for going after those spreading the gospel is. I, and I mean, I understand all of you probably have opinions and everything, but do we have any idea what 
the governments in that region officially are saying as to why they would go after somebody who's trying to spread the word. Well, that's, you know, that's a really good question, but we know that obviously this isn't, this hasn't been the first time that persecution has happened. You know, there's, there's reports all the way, maybe some of you remember last year in 2012, there was a, a pastor, Christian pastor that had converted from Islam to Christianity. And, um, and he actually was persecuted by having acid thrown in his face from a Muslim as the Muslim was yelling, Allah Akbar, or, you know, God is great. Their God, of course, is great. And and, um, and, and he was, he, he's blind to this day. Well, we've heard that. Now, Uganda is not a Muslim country, right? Right. It is not. Right. But Which is why I asked but, the question. Mm -hmm. I mean, since Uganda is not a Muslim country, why would Uganda be out there persecuting Christians? That's a great question. Well, you know, we, we know America is, is um, a Christian country, but we, we, we face persecution. And so, you know, the, the Bible is true when it says that, you know, all those who desire to live godly will suffer persecution. And sometimes there, there aren't answers for it, but, but um, we know that the persecution does end up coming, even though it, it, it you know, it's, Christianity is legal. And we have freedoms here, but the, the truth is, is that um, the Bible stands true, and that that law and that true truth is is um, above even you know what what happens, what what we see today. Now let me ask you a question here, please. Your organization obviously has been around for a while, and intends to be around for a while. This is an, a, a terrible incident, but an incident that that took place, and you know by God's grace didn't have terrible ramifications. Right. Uh, so the purpose of your being on this program and, and, and going on other programs, uh, you can talk about this one incident, but, but your, your greater purpose is what? Yeah, our greater purpose is to, to spread the gospel to as many people as we can um, by using something as simple as, as a DVD, a gospel message. And so this incident that I, that I speak of right now is, was very rare. Um, the, biggest, the biggest project has been around for about one year, okay? Its inception was just, just a year ago. And within a year amount of time, we've given out 144,000 DVDs, all sponsored by Wretched Radio listeners. Uh, Wretched Radio is um, a ministry of Todd Friel. Todd Friel is the host. And so a whole bunch of Christians just got behind this project. And our, our, our goal is just to get the gospel into people's hands because it has everlasting life. You know, I'm, I'm all about doing things like building churches and feeding the poor and things. But but the last thing we want to do is 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 not not preach the gospel. We want to preach the gospel along with doing good works. And, and um, you know, I, I just think it's such a tragedy that, that um, there are different organizations that do claim to be Christian, and yet they, they will just go and build a house, but then there's no gospel message attached to it. It's almost as if they're patting their, their backs all the way to hell. I mean, that's really the truth. And so we want to we wanna speak the truth in love, and, and, and that is done so eloquently and so well and so clear on The Biggest Question DVD. And you just go to thebiggestproject.com, and, um, and you can help there. Each DVD is, is only a dollar. All you've got to do is you, you support it. And what we do is we, we provide the people. We, we set up the teams and send the people out to actually get the DVDs into the hands of individuals. We've had all sorts of different reports back of, of people sending emails you know, emails, people um, contacting the individuals that distributed the DVDs, and they are, they're in tears, they're, they're grateful. Um, just over the Christmas break, not too long ago, we had um, one team give them out in an apartment complex along with gift cards. Each home got a $20 gift card, and um, the people were just so incredibly blown away by it. So we have faithful team leaders that, that distribute these, and it's just, it's just been really, really uh, incredible to see what the Lord's done. Well, I, I appreciate that, and I couldn't agree with you more that if you don't give the message that the good works are, are by themselves not sufficient. They're certainly appreciated and helpful and, and positive, but you, you have to give the word with it. Let me ask you a question. Uh, your pastor that was unceremoniously smacked, uh, is he black or white? He is African American. He, but right, he so was he originally, is, yeah. I'm he just was saying a that it wasn't a racial thing that he was mm -hmm. in Uganda as a white person. He was a black person in a black area, right? That's exactly right. Okay. I didn't know. I just I thought the question was worth asking. Uh, 
Chief? Well, again, this is a very interesting story. Um, I'm still, like, like Brent had said, I'd like to know why the government has gotten involved in this if it's not a mm -hmm. Muslim-controlled uh, government. Um, but I, I, I appreciate what you're doing. Uh, you're obviously the kind of people that aren't going around strapping bombs on your chest and blowing people up. That's right. Something very, very much more productive than that. So I commend you for that. That's right. But, you know, someone once said that um, we don't wage war the way other religions do by blowing up buildings or persecuting people, you know, with physical things like guns. And um, but what we do is we wage war with words. We blow up worldviews. That's what we do. That, that's the type of war that we wage as Christians with truth. And so, um, you know, we know that the, the Bible has truth that is outside of time. And, you know, we um, I was just at UNT, the University of North Texas. Texas the other day passing out the biggest question DVDs and and I was talking to an atheist and I said you know what as an atheist you have to hypocritically borrow from my worldview every day without even giving any credence to it every day you hypocritically borrow from the biblical worldview and he goes on to you know say, he, he you know I said I, I need to repeat that to you a couple times to see if you got it so I repeated it again to him and um, he couldn't even go a couple sentences without saying the word good or without saying um, um, that murder was wrong. And I said, well, where did you get that from? Well, of course we know we get it from the Ten Commandments, but he doesn't have an infinite reference point. And I love how the, the Bible is, 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 is wise. God's mind is so wise. And, and um, so the battles that we fight are not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. And so, of course, you know, things like this are going to happen. And we shouldn't think that it is strange, the different fiery trials that come, come to us, but we need to be discerning. And um, one of the other things that I, I love about A Wretched Radio and uh, the biggest project is and things is that it's a very discerning ministry. Um, we want to be discerning. We want to teach people how to discern right from wrong and and um, truth from error. And the truth is, is that there's only two types of people in the world. You're either in Adam still with your sin still on your head or you're in Christ. And it's very simple. In fact, my husband just wrote a book. Um, Stan, I'll have to send you a copy, okay, unless you have a Kindle. I'll send you a, a Kindle. But he wrote a book called Convert from Adam to Christ, and it's all on the nature of conversion, what it looks like to be brought out of Adam and be put, put safely into Christ. And um, that's our whole goal with The Biggest Project is to make sure that people are brought safely out of Adam and put into Christ. And obviously, we know that we don't do that. God's the one that does the converting, but um, we just we just go. It is, it's His job, and we do the laboring, and we're, we're honored to do that. Well, again, I, I laud you for what you're doing, and I, I, I sense and appreciate the sincerity with which you're offering this uh, message. Um, by the way, did we get that website so we can put it up on the screen? Biggestproject.com. Biggestproject okay, so we'll have it up on the screen so our, our viewers can see it. Thank you. Uh, let me quote something to you that I made up, which doesn't mean it's much, but I've used it effectively <laughs> in discussions because I, I think atheists are idiots. Uh, they may be nice idiots, but they're idiots. But I always say there are two types of people in the world those who believe in God and those who think they're God. Because if you don't <laughs> right. believe in God, obviously you get to make all the decisions. That doesn't mean you think you created the world, but you get to decide what's right, what's wrong, what's in, what's out, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, and you get to change as often as you want to change because you're God. And when I say that to people, uh, Christians laugh and agnostics, atheists, and liberals uh, are all offended, uh, which means I, I must have struck close to home. Your thoughts? That's right. That's what they say, that the dog that got got hit or the one that barks the loudest is the one that pretty much got hit. And the truth is, is that, you know, every other worldview does have to hypocritically borrow from the biblical worldview in order to make sense of its own. And so that's why I love presuppositional apologetics. You know, anytime um, someone says, hey, you shouldn't be judging, which exactly happened just the other day when my husband was open air preaching at the University of North Texas. An atheist came up and said, hey, he's judging people. And I said, well, aren't you judging his judging? <laughs> and so we've got to look at who has who has the ultimate standard of, of right and wrong. And of course, they, they think that they do, but then they're borrowing hypocritically from the Bible when they say that murder is wrong. I say, well, where do you get that from? They say from their parents. And I say, well, where do, their, where do your parents get it from? And obviously, they don't have an infinite reference point. So the atheist does not have an infinite, re infinite reference point like we do. Our infinite reference point is the mind of God. And he is never wrong. He is always right. And he demands, doesn't 
doesn't even say think about getting right. He demands that all people repent or perish. It's it's actually a command: repent or perish. And um, and the gospel is is truly you know, glorious, you know, it's unbelievable. It really is simply unbelievable, but it is believable and God allows us to believe it. But we're telling people to believe in in the virgin birth. We're telling people to believe in in this man, God man named Jesus Christ who lived absolutely perfectly and then died on a cross and rose from the dead and then comes back and says, you know, appears to 500 people and now says, repent and believe in me. Yes, that's, that's the gospel that we're, that we're preaching and there's, there's hope in that. And, um, and so, yeah, I'll have to stand. I'll, I'll send you guys guys at some of these as well so you can watch it i'd love to get your your thoughts on it i think it's well we'll look forward to doing that i don't know if you have our information but if you just uh email us uh what email should we Uh, all right yeah just uh, christy dennis had booked you you get the email from her and everything that you can get information absolutely all right uh, brent do you have another comment no, my only comment is what I've said before on the show, which is that the one thing that's missing throughout American society is the foundational background that comes with faith in a supreme being. And when, when you accept God, you accept the commandments. When you accept the commandments, you have a standard for moral behavior. Conversely, when you do not accept the existence of God, there are no standards. And what you just said uh, a moment ago, Stan. There are just no standards at all except the standards that you, as an individual, come up with. And that changes with wind. So I really applaud what you are doing. Anybody who is out there trying to spread the word deserves a great deal of acknowledgement and appreciation. So to you and to your organization, you have my acknowledgement and my appreciation for what that's worth. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. And you know, Stan, I got to share with you something really funny that happened the other day in Fort Worth. I live in the Dallas Fort Worth area, and um, I had I was passing out the DVDs and sharing the gospel in downtown Fort Worth in a little uh, Mexican market area, um, getting some tacos and things. I love Mexican food too, but but. The interesting thing that happened was the H and R Block people came out, and I thought I was going to be reprimanded for passing out the DVDs. And they said, "What are you passing out?" And I said, "Oh, they have a gospel message on them, and I had gospel tracks and things." And they actually invited me in. Said, "Could you put a whole bunch of these on the the counter? Uh, we want to we want to put them there so that every single person that comes in can get them." So <laughs> I thought that was so incredible. They put them out there, and not only that, then they ended up emailing me and inviting me back to come um, a couple days later and set up the. DVDs. DVDs and gospel tracks to preach the gospel on their table right next to all their stuff. They were having a big H and R block day. So, you know, you just never know what types of doors the Lord's the Lord can open up. It's an exciting adventure. Well, uh, on well, that he, note, he, he sat with the tax farmer, so I guess, <laughs> I guess it's appropriate. Yeah, there you go. Uh, on that note, we will thank you so much, Tricia, for what you, your husband, all the members of the ministry are doing. We wish you a Godspeed and God's protection. Thank you all. And, and may those who come against you uh, succumb to the word. And those who mm. can't figure it out, well, I have gift certificates for lobotomies. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Stan. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely, lovely person. All right, we'll be back shortly, folks. Stay tuned. There's more on Talk to Solomon. Hey, my name is Stan Solomon, and you know if I have something to say, I'll say it. And I'll only tell you the truth because I'm a Republican, not a Democrat. Democrats always lie. Republicans only lie half the time. I don't lie at all. This is the fuel mule. It's an extraordinary product that was developed by a friend of mine, an engineer, and it increases the fuel mileage on your vehicle. If you have a combustion engine, this will increase your mileage by 10 to 20 percent. It bolts around your fuel line. You can install it yourself or have your mechanic do it. It is an extraordinary item and it flat works. I've been using it for more than 10 years. It's increased my mileage on every vehicle I put it on. And by the way, it will last forever. You can get rid of your vehicle. Just take it off and put on the next one. Go to cpnlive.com. You'll have more information there. You can order it right there. We absolutely guarantee you'll be satisfied. The Fuel Mule. 
It's a way to kick down your cost of fuel and kick up your mileage. Don't you love the name? I thought of it. The Fuel Mule. Do you like being healthy? I do. In fact, this product, which I've been taking for years now, is absolutely the answer. Now, you may not believe it, but I'm actually 21, plus tax, of course. This product has 146 different healthful nutrients in it, and it's liquid, so it's bioavailable. It tastes great, and it's sugar-free. One ounce of Sonic Life each day will help you to maintain and enhance your health. It's the kind of a gift, well, that you'll thank your mom for, your husband for, your wife for, your kids for. Whoever you give it to, they're going to say thank you. And you are going to enjoy the benefits of having all the vitamins, all the minerals, all the nutrients your body needs in one very reasonably priced product. Just go to cpnlive.com and everything's right there. You'll be able to read all the ingredients. The price is right there, a flat price delivered to your door anywhere in the United States of America. Sonic Life is a gift, a great gift. Give it to yourself. I do. I like to eat. Do you like to eat? We all do. And usually we run to the grocery store, we run to the convenience store, uh, or we have something in the fridge. But power's been out in parts of this country in the last few weeks. Uh, we don't know what's going to come down the pike economically. Smart people are putting in food. Alpine Air Gourmet Reserves is a line of foods that you can put away that will last for a very long time. You know, they say eat what you store and store what you eat. This is great tasting stuff, healthy for you, a full line. You go to our website, CPN Live. You have a computer, if you're alive today, which means you have a hard drive, which means it's going to break down. Mosey, the backup people, for thousands, for Stan, for thousands of people, for tens of thousands of people, is simply common sense. You go to cpnlive.com, click on the icon for Mosey, the backup people, and sign up. It's, it's just a few dollars a month. Let me tell you something. We had a break-in. They stole our whole computer. You know what? When they take the computer, you can't recover anything, but we had Mosey. We had the backup. We were able to restore everything simply by buying another computer. CPNlive.com, click on the icon for Mosey the backup people, and give yourself common sense, peace of mind, great value, the best thing you've ever done. Sooner or later, it's going to be Mosey the backup people.